Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Oh, movie thoughts. So, I like how Andrew, over the course of the film, sort of becomes more and more of a monster. You know, as sort of, you know, it, it is sort of the, the classic story of a man pushed too far and a man who suddenly has a power that he can't, you know, it, it's, it is very much when, when someone has power, it is very much about what would this person do if they, you know, would they abuse power if they had the chance? Would they be, you know, if Andrew had gotten these powers earlier, it, you know, essentially the same thing would have happened. You know, it, it's not that he gets these powers that's the problem. It's that he's been abandoned and downtrodden for so long. You know, if, if one is to take you know, a moral or a message from the movie, I would say it is to, you know, to always be there for you know, other people. And I, I think it really, you know, it says a lot that, you know, that you, you have Matt trying to set up rules, you know, as sort of, you know, he's, he's the, the, the more ethical one, you know, Andrew is just, you know, he, yeah, he, he isn't, he isn't capable of, you know, maintaining self-control with this kind of, and, and I think it's also very, I, I love that the film has that sort of almost victory that still becomes a defeat. You know, the popularity contest and then the party, you know, where, you know, it's the first time he's drinking, so he drinks too much, and he can't, you know, he, yeah, it, it goes wrong with the pink-haired girl, and, you know, suddenly, you know, the bullies are after him again, after, you know... Steve, and I also think, you know, with Steve, it is sort of this thing of, you know, he's, he is losing control. He, he shows a great deal of remorse afterwards. It, it was a stray thought, you know, it was suddenly, he just, you know, there, there is that thing, I don't remember if he specifically says something to... Steve before that point, but, you know, he, you know, with, with Matt, you know, when they're talking, he's, you know, he insults him, and then Matt goes, you know, see, this, this is what I'm talking about, you're, you're, you're hostile, you know, and that's exactly it, he is sort of, you know, his, his first thought about other people, his first instinct is just, just leave me alone, because he's just used to other people paying attention to him being a sign that of them, you know, they're, they're going to say something to him or do something towards him. And, you know, he just doesn't want that. So he, he shuts down, he closes himself off, and when other people are approaching him, he expects, any minute now, you're going to do something. And I'm not going to let you do it, so I'm just going to, you know, shut down. And... That's it with Steve. He just, he wanted to be alone, you know, and, he, you know, at that point it was too late. It was too late for other people to try to reach him, you know, it should have happened or years earlier, really. And, yeah, a stray thought and suddenly, you know, Steve is gone and he, he really didn't mean to. It was just that, that sort of instinct, you know, the too quick kind of end. 
yeah, I, I thought that was a really great how and and you know then there at the very end you have him you know raising the cop cars and all this at that point you know I mean the last part you can kind of understand of of him doing you know harmful things to others is with his father you can understand why he would want to let his father fall to his death like that after that he has just gone off the rails you know he is now you know he's hurting policemen he downs that helicopter you know he what's it called he but yeah and, you know he raises all those cop cars and all those cops and i don't know i i could be wrong but i do see it as you know if he really wanted to he could fly away but he's he's passed he's he's sort of reached his boiling point this is enough he is not going to stand for it anymore. He is not going to let other people dictate what he does. He is not going to move just because other people won't let him be here, you know. So he fights back. And it's just, at, at that point, that is sort of the, the one thing that makes sense in his head. He cannot, he will not move. He will not, you know, and that's also the thing. I love how several of the lines are just really sort of pivotal, you know, you, you have the, you know, you don't tell me what to do. You know, that line of, you know, where Matt tries to reason with him. He's not, you know, trying to, he's really not trying to hurt Andrew. And I think and that also really comes across. You can really tell that Matt is genuine. He really means it. And also how he, you know, he, at the party, he just says it to the camera, but Presumably Andrew never catches that. He never rewinds that tape and sees, oh wait, actually that camera is lost. Yeah, down the, the cave. Actually, how the heck did they get that film back? Anyway, yeah, so you know, he says it, I love you, man, and I want you to know that. And then there at the end, after he's dead, never got around to telling you, I love you, you know. That really that was excellent, I thought. But but yeah, you know, so when he's trying to reason with Andrew, Andrew just sees it as you're just another person who you know, who wants me to do something specific that I don't want to do. You want to force something of yours onto, you know, into my space. You know, you want to insult me or make me do something that I don't want to do, you know. And, yeah, you know, the... But, but yeah, that's that's one of the lines. The other was how, you know, his mother talk to him about you know also the the bit with the I will get back to the the mother bit but the suit you know how he gets in there and and just and the way she talks to him and and just his reaction you know you can really tell it means something to him to, to hear these you know that you you look really good and that you know and then you know the last thing we see him you know the, the last time we see him wearing that suit you know with the th it's got the throw up on it, you know, and that that's again, it's it's this perfect kind of, you know, yeah, it it has that, I don't know, some a, a potential victory turned into an utter defeat, you know, and it was actually one of the worst defeats because suddenly everyone knows about him and everyone hears about, you know, his failure with the red haired girl. I'm sorry, I'm not going to call her the pink haired girl because that hair is red. I don't know. If there's like something with the color settings on the camera, but the way the hair was red, okay? I, I'm sorry. That hair was red. Red hair is better. Sorry. The mother with the, you know, the, the line, she makes him say, you know, the, the you, you are stronger than this, or you are strong enough for this. And then later he sort of perverted it into, I don't remember his exact words, but just the way he says it, or the, the words he uses then, it's not that he, as a person, has the strength of character to withstand what other people might say or do to him. It's that he is powerful enough 
to get back at the people who has hurt him. You know, that he is powerful enough to, you know, get yeah, so, something along those lines. I don't know if I'm making myself quite clear, but yeah, you know, that was really excellent. You know, this sort of... About the mother, when he turned her over, I could not for the life of me, I, I can't tell if he was hurting her or helping her. You know, was that what killed her? Did that, you know, I don't know, I don't know about the disease she has, so I, I couldn't quite tell if it was like, I don't know, turning a baby on its stomach, you know, so it could, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I couldn't quite tell. And, you know, I thought that maybe he was doing it to, like, give her an easy death, but I guess, I don't know, I guess not because he did go out and steal. That was also something that I really thought, you know, Excuse me, when you see it in the trailer, you don't know why he's stealing that money. As the, you see in the movie, it's for medicine for his mother, you know. And then the father comes and tells him, you know, she's dead and it's your fault, you know. And I just love the imagery of this extremely powerful psychic who is mentally unstable, confined to a bed, clearly hurt, injured, physically injured, and another character who he already has animosity towards is yelling at him. You know, I th th at that point, I really thought of, like, comic books. You know, that really seems like just this sort of, you know, it's just this really powerful image, you know. It just has a, a real, it, it just, it sears itself into your mind, you know, and you just know. Something bad's gonna happen here. This is not gonna go well. You know, with the father yelling at, and suddenly you just have the explosion. You know, and but yeah, and, and just the the imagery. You know, of he has been burnt, and and the the gauze actually comes off once he's flying. You know, and then you just have these red, swollen, burnt arms, and this scar across his face, and he just really he has this sort of. A dark man, my friend suggested Two-Face, kind of vibe to him, you know, just sort of the the physical appearance now matches the the evilness of his deeds, you know, at, at this point he is just, he has crossed the line, you know, that went, that, that was a really good tool, I thought. Now, I love how the car, you know, gets raised up to the, the, the I think it's a space needle? The, the needle, you know, the Seattle Space Needle. And, you know, almost, you know, falls back down to the ground. And then, you know, Casey gets saved there afterwards. I do wonder how the heck they got past the police barricade. You know, it just, the camera cuts, and then suddenly he's chasing an ambulance. I don't know, maybe he's a lawyer all of a sudden. And he just gets through. And, you know, there, there is a cop who tries to stop him afterwards, and he gets Andrewed away from there. And, and drawn, actually. And, yeah, it just, how, how did he get past the, you know, did, did he crash through, or what, how, how exactly did, did he go like, my cousin's father is an ex-firefighter, you have to let me through? I don't know. But yeah, not, like I said in the review, not very many gaps in the sort of, you know. Actually, I, I can quite, I can live with that we don't see how they get back out of the cave, you know. That's actually just sort of just mysterious. And I like how afterwards it's sort of collapsed, you know, and you have, the, oh, this area's being, you know, what's it called? You know, we're, we're um... Putting police tape all across this area, or something like that. And... Yeah. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the trailer and the shots that were v just not in the film. You know, I'd, I'd say about half the stuff that I, that I saw and remember was in there. But the image of a car on the... I don't know, sharp end of the Space Needle, that was not in the movie. That half-naked chick, 
you know, yelling, turn off the camera? Not in the movie. The, what was the other thing? I felt like there was at least one more, but, but yeah, I just, I don't know, I'm not entirely sure why they cut, oh, one really important, I don't know, I guess maybe they did just shoot this one for the trailer, but look, them looking at Andrew going, was it an accident, Andrew? And him just standing there brooding, you know, that was really, I don't know, I, I want to see that in there, but yeah. And yes, the, the, him crushing a car, he's essentially showing off, you know, but yeah. I, yeah, and I like the, the bit with, you know, the, what was it, Apex Predator, I think that was what he called it. You know, how he, you know, he said, oh, I studied about this, there is the Apex Predator. And it's sort of, you know, he now feels superior to the rest of the human race. And that's the sort of thing that, that would happen to someone who had been very downtrodden and suddenly got a taste of real power. You know, it has happened to people like that, just, you know wasn't actually, you know, telekinesis before. But, yeah, you know, the... Yeah, it, it just... I thought that was a, a real... You know, it, it was very nicely done. I mean, it's cliche somewhat, but... I don't know, it just... It didn't feel... It didn't feel cliche, if that makes sense, you know. Now, those cops there at the end, not shooting Andrew, those have got to be the most, you know, the cops showing the most restraint ever. I mean, I get that it had to be that, you know, what's his face? Matt does it, you know. And I like how, you know, even afterwards, he is, he is not judging Andrew. You know, he says... How, you know, especially that last bit, how did, how did they get the camera back? It was left in Tibet, you know, and he flies off. By the way, I mentioned in the review, sometimes the flying looks goofy. When Matt flies back out of Andrew's place, you know, I think it's after Steve dies. I don't remember exactly. Something like that. That looked kind of goofy. You know, that was very, I have to go save, you know, a cat out of a tree. Very Superman. That was a little goofy. Now, but yes, very, very patient police force, you know. It had to be Matt to, you know, who actually, you know, killed Andrew. And again, we have this great image. He doesn't just kill him. He impales that son of a bitch. You know, just, yeah, that, and, and it's not just a spear. It's this spear from, why was that spear detachable? Can somebody explain that one to me? I, it's, yeah, okay, I'm gonna forgive it because it's an awesome image, you know, that he just grabs this, mentally grabs the spear right from the statue and just hurls it through. I mean, the thickness of that spear is like Andrew's arm or something, you know, just, yeah. Lengthwise, not... Or is it breath? Whatever. Now... But yes, I like that Matt, even afterwards, is sort of, you know, I understand why this happened, you know, and I should have been there for you, and, you know, I, I still don't blame you. And I feel like we, you know, he is a tragic character, Andrew. It is not this tale of this horrible person. It is someone who could have been, you know... He could have been great, but he he had, you know, too much bad happen to him, and he just couldn't withstand it, you know. Now, about the cops, yeah, I do think that strained credulity a little bit. I don't know, he just it feels like in real life, he'd have been, you know, I don't know, shot at least with rubber bullets, you know, maybe maced. Uh, then again, he isn't an OWS protester. And they certainly took that whole, he killed someone else real well. And again, that was a black kid, so maybe he was just standing his ground. I think that just about covers everything I wanted to say about the movie. 
I like how the relationship between Matt and Casey is just sort of hinted at. You know, you do just... Get, you, you, they're together at Steve's funeral, and, you know, he comes to her door and just has the, you know, ah, I just wanted to give money because, see, I'm a, I'm a good person. Do you like me now? I mean, um, I'm a good person, you know, and, yeah, over the course of it, it just... They're together, and then suddenly, you know, he's at, like, her family's, you know, at least I, I assumed it was her family. I just, it seemed a little weird that she'd be bringing a camera to his family's thing. I don't know, whatever. They're together at a family thing, you know. That's pretty couple relationshipy kind of stuff right there, you know. And I liked the sort of device of they're connected now with the nosebleeds and you know Steve finds Andrew up in the clouds with this sort of I don't know the you know because he hears the his voice or something like that and you know he I think he mentions a nosebleed as well but you know whatever and Matt you know he gets a nosebleed because Andrew just blew up the hospital and you know, he goes there, you know, I thought that worked pretty well as a sort of, you know, you know, and it, it made, I don't know, it, it just, it worked. I'm not sure quite what else to say about it. It just, yeah. I suppose that just about covers it. I thought this did really well at sort of having scenes escalate. This, what's it called? You, you have, like, like the scene where Steve dies. You know, they're up in the clouds and there's just thunder and lightning all around them. And you can just tell something's bad. Something bad is going to happen here. You know, you don't know exactly what maybe, but just, yeah, this is, this is not going to be, you know, it's, it's a very ominous scene, and I think Steve's death, that exact moment, excellently balances sort of... We f sort of figured that something like that might happen by the end of the scene, and it's still sort of surprising. When I, when I started watching the movie, I did not know that Steve was going... I guess I should have seen it coming. The black guy has to die. But still, you know, it, it really worked. You know, and you have the scene where Andrew's father confronts him about, oh, you bought this expensive camera, you know. And it it just escalates, you know. And, and at first, I mean, we go from them sitting across from each other and the father just over and over saying, look at me when I'm talking to you. You know, and Andrew just boiling with rage and fury, and finally he just, you know, you, I go to a public school, it, you don't pay for that, you idiot, and that's it, you know, suddenly, you know, and table gets knocked over, chairs get knocked over, and he attacks Andrew, and then suddenly Andrew, you know, mind wrestle throws his father into the wall, you know, and just, yeah, that, uh, you know, because, again, at the beginning of the scene, that's not quite what you see happening, but you, you know, it's a sort of logical progression through the scene, you know, it, it makes sense, and you feel it right there with them, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't feel out of place, any of the reactions of the people, I thought that, was quite good. I liked that, you know, at, at the end, just sort of have Matt becoming a superhero. But other than that, I liked that it wasn't like, hey, we have powers now, let's go fight crime. You know, I, yeah, I'm sorry, that's not really the reaction of normal people. You know, I, I'm sure there are some people who would you know, be like that, but for a lot of people, you know, yeah, if, if you just discovered that you had this weird new ability, wouldn't you just play around with it, maybe use it to impress people, you know, stuff like that, stuff like they do in this movie. 
I thought that they, that you know they they did that quite well, you know, better than I better than I'd say we usually see. You know, I haven't seen all the movies where people acquire super superpowers, but you know, it tends to be you know treated more, yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.